Hey everybody, Wayne Will here. Justin Myrie with CNB Operations. Today we're going to take you through the all new S7 series combines. Wayne, if you had to summarize the top three features on this new combine, what would you say they'd be? Yeah, well, I'm really excited, but the first three things that I would really want to focus on would be efficiency, throughput, and future technology. So we're going to take you through all the different areas in this combine here in a quick walk around. Uh, we'll talk about the engine, we'll talk about the cab, we'll talk about the fancy new gadgets that we get with this machine. Let's take off. All right, Justin, so behind me, this machine looks a little bit different than what we've seen with the S700 series combines. What are we talking about here with the new S7 series? Right, so when we look at the styling on the machine, basically it's just updated to match the look of the new tractors that are coming in X9 combines, right? So one thing I take away from this is that the, the user experience with the machine, the styling, the cab, the interior, and everything is going to match what an X9 combine would be. So we don't have such a difference in them when we're jumping between machines. It's gonna be similar experience and, and layout and everything for those operators and, and make it easier to jump in between those machines, so. And it just looks cool. It does look cool. All right, Justin, so this cab looks a little different, right? So what are we seeing in this cab that maybe we've seen in the past? Right, so similar to the outward appearance and styling of the machine, the cab got refreshed to, to match similar layout of what the X9 combines would be, so you got a more familiar feel jumping between those machines, but we also get the, the enhancements like the app touchscreen radio, and we get the G5 armrest display corner post, and we've also got the new PDU up there too, right? So the layout's refreshed to match those machines and just give us a fresh look inside the cab. Plus we get the comfort of the new seat and all the other features in there that we've come to love in the other machines, right? So it makes those harvest days a little bit shorter when you're out there all Absolutely. day long. Absolutely, <laughs> yep. The big thing on this combine is gonna be the technology side of things, that's gonna be what stands apart from previous model year machines. So we'll talk through a couple different pieces on that aspect, but it's really the train settings automation, the predictive ground speed automation, and then the harvest settings automation. When we look at the command center display here, it's really easy to see the harvest settings automation part of it. We're basically setting up these three parameters based on what loss level we're acceptable with. The premise underneath it is instead of getting the machine set, the computer maintain that setting a grain loss or acceptable sample. Uh, we're basically setting the parameters on grain loss, form material, and broken grain, and then the machine's going to do the work for us to fine-tune that combine to get within that loss level if it can. So simplifies the whole setup of the automation side and also gives a better indication on what it's making for changes and why, so we can see on the right side there um, different reasons why settings will be changing on the combine so we have a better understanding as an operator what it's seeing, what it's thinking, and why it's doing what it's doing. So when you think of combine advisor that we've seen in the past. Forget everything you know about that because this is a totally updated and new system, right? Because it's a digital architecture and in, inside this machine, uh, more sensors, more data inputs, uh, a lot better at reacting to what the system needs. So uh, similarities between the two systems, but it's it's supposed to be in the next generation essentially. So we got a new PDU, basically a corner post uh, display there that matches the look of the new tractors coming on the line there. So uh, layout's changed a little bit from previous machines. So instead of having the grain loss in the lower left, we've got it on the right side now. And essentially they've consolidated that into being rotor loss and shoe loss down at the bottom. And then they're combined in the bar graph above it, basically just showing a combined total for them loss wise. And then the bars will show the difference between rotor and separator in there too. So at a glance, it's really easy to see uh, below or above or near your, your loss target. And then also to see where the majority of your loss coming for, uh, is coming from, if it's the shoe or if it's the rotors. So. Another really nice feature about that new PDU screen is that uh, later in the afternoon when the sun's shining into the cab, that screen shows up bright and clear. Unlike the older PDU screens that we've had in the past where it kind of gets glared, uh, it's really hard to see when those, those certain light conditions, this screen uh, will shine through those conditions. So a nice feature and update to that corner post at PDU. All right, so another feature that we can get from the factory on model year 25 combines. We can get it as a retrofit kit from 2018 to 24 combines on our S700 series combines, but is the adjustable end spout on here, right? So yep. what are some of the features of the adjustable end spout, Justin? So a couple things on it, right? We get 14 inches of travel range on there, so we can definitely get the cart full, right? We've got the ability to, to move that. The thing I like is most of the time, guys are gonna have a program to the scroll wheel on their hydro handle. So it's an adjustment I can make without having to move my hand when I'm, when I'm running. So. A couple other things we get inside the grain handling menu is going to be a target location to send it to when it goes to unload, so it's always going back to the same position, as well as a clean-out sequence on here. So at the end of the clean-out sequence with the cross-auger shutoff kits, it's going to 
drop the spout all the way down to make sure we get the rest of the grain out of it. And then we can set it back up in a horizontal position just to keep grain from dribbling out as we go across the field, right? Yeah. So Yeah, because that grain dribbles for quite a while after you're done <laughs> unloading into the grain cart, right? So hopefully eliminate some of that spillage and you know hopefully more bushels in the grain bin right. at the end of the year, right? Now we took a look inside the cab. Let's take a walk around the rest of the machine to see what other improvements were made on the S7 combines. All right, so what we're looking at here is the all new JD14 engine. It's a 13.6 liter uh, engine. It's gonna be using about 10% less fuel. It's gonna be about 10% more efficient than our previous 13.5 liter engines that we've seen in the S780s and 790s. Uh, along with that, this engine is going to operate at about 2,000 engine RPMs when you're going through the field. That's going to, again, get reduce the noise in the cab. That's going to use less fuel, less depth, less heat. Along with that, we've also simplified the after-treatment system, right? So we did away with the diesel particulate filter and the diesel oxidization catalyst and went to a straight inline SCR system. So that's going to give us a couple things where we have fewer regen cycles and it's going to run cooler, so it'll be overall more efficient. So on our all new S7 600 and 700 series combines, we're running the Gen 2 9 liter engine in those machines. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference between the 760 that we've seen model year 24 and previous or the 770. There is gonna be a difference on the 770 from the S7 700. You're gonna get an additional about 11 horsepower out of the S7 700 over what we had with the S770. So again, you're still gonna be running at around 221, 2200 RPMs when you're harvesting through the field. Um, but it, that engine also does share the inline after treatment SCR uh, system that the S7 800s and the S7 900s use as well. All right, so we're standing behind the S7 800 here. Uh, we've got a few different options now for what we're gonna do with our residue management system. So what are those options for us, Justin? So we still got the, the older just uh, spread options there, but for what we're gonna see mostly common in our weed, soybean, corn, acres is gonna be either the deluxe PowerCast tailboard or the premium PowerCast tailboard like we have here. Um, then we've got options to get that in fine cut or extra fine cut. And then we'll also have the options for no chop to drop or remote chop to drop doors. So basically three options to configure that um, to get that system uh, set up. Absolutely. So. so there's a plethora of different options you can get depending on your operation, whether you want to drop straw, whether you just want to chop it up and spread it out finely. Um, this particular option here is our premium power cast tailboard on this machine here. This One of the major, major changes uh, from the previous S700 series combines into the new S7 series combines is going to be that our power cast tailboard is now a direct drive from the chopper. So no longer do we have those orbital motors on top driving those spinner spreaders. Now they're going to rotate at a fixed speed when you're going through the field. And the way that we're going to adjust our spread width is going to be with these shrouds here. So the shrouds will move in and out depending on how wide you want your spread width to be. We have the ability to go up to 45 feet uh, spread width on our S7 series combines. We also do have the ability to narrow that up if you really want to. Um, otherwise, one of the nice features with this particular system is we've had it before, but we, we continue to roll it through into the new combines is the auto swap feature, right? So essentially, that auto swap feature is going to spread that residue farther to one side than it will to the other side, depending on whichever direction the wind is blowing from, right? So we always know that our, our harvest days are super windy, right, usually. Uh, or they can be at least. So this will help eliminate spreading that residue into the crop that you haven't harvested yet, um, or just keeping it more even as you're going through the field. Because next season begins right behind the combine, right? So we're always, always looking at ways to, to better manage our residue for the next crop season. Yeah, and the big thing right on that too, automate it so it's, don't remember to hit it at the end as part of your turnaround functions. It's, yep. it's there, your GPS receiver changes heading, it knows to make that swap for you, so. So in addition to being mechanically driven, right, we said that's great because it's gonna follow our chopper speed. So from corn to soybeans or wheat or anything like that, when we change our speed on our chopper, spinners are gonna change speed as well, right? We eliminate the hydraulic components out of there, right? So bad motors, leaks, hoses that are issues and whatnot, and take some of those issues that we might've had in the past and eliminate them, so. And what's typically the, the power hog on a combine? Right, it's hydraulic chopper flow, system, right? right? So yeah. eliminating that hydraulic flow, that's gonna give us an, about an additional 15 horsepower to put in other parts of this combine, right? So that was another, Another really big things that John Deere was pushing for with these new series combines is to be the most efficient with the horsepower that we have. So we can maybe divert it to maybe cutting at the head or maybe threshing in the, in the threshing system, right? So there's a lot of different uh, neat things that are to come with this series combine. So uh, along with the chopper knives, the chopper knives are different too, right? We've got those XL chopper knives that have the dimples in them to help with airflow. 
since we don't have those hammers in there that are actually pulling more airflow out because we have the additional air chutes on the sides, we have the ability to run just the knives um, and have those basically not robbing as much horsepower as they have. We don't need past. to suck wind through the, the yeah. chopper anymore. We can let it out the side chutes and yep. yeah, save that horsepower. And, and it's gonna be all tailboards going to that straight knife too, so. So Justin, we're here in the back of the combine looking at our chaffer, our cleaning shoe area. Uh, do notice here we got something different here with uh, this plate here covering up uh, yep. our sensors. Yeah, so we added additional grain loss sensors, right? So we got that going for us, four across the shoe here, so we got better resolution what's going on. The other change came with these covers over the grain loss sensors. So in the past we had plastic fingers that yeah. came out over the sensor. Chaff would get in there and plug them up or we'd have issues with false strikes and sometimes you just didn't trust that grain loss sensor at that point. So the new frog mouth design here is supposed to prevent uh, that crop from bunching up underneath there, give us more reliable information coming off the loss sensors to be better inputs for the automation side of things, plus uh, just as an operator be able to keep a better eye what's going on Absolutely. back behind us. Yeah, right on, that'll be a little bit better for keeping track of how the machine is running through the field, so. Something that's going to be available for order from the factory for model year 25 is going to be something that we've had out previous years, right, is performance upgrade kits. Yeah. You want to elaborate on that a little Absolutely, bit? Absolutely, yeah. So back to model year 18 on the S700 series combines, we could put what we call the cross auger shutoff kits on those combines as a retrofit kit. But going forward into model year 25 on the S7 series combines, as well as our X9 series combines, we've got that standard feature as well, but we'll be able to get that from the factory a model year 25 machine. Essentially the cross auger shutoff is gonna allow us to shut off the cross augers in the grain tank, like we said, to give us the time for the unloading auger to finish unloading. So you don't have that extra weight swinging out there on the field when you have to fold that thing up. And then when you have to restart it again, right? Because I know I've I probably replaced a lot of those shear pins on that uh, unloading auger starter, right? Shear pins being the, the cheap part, right? Too, yeah. when we start talking yeah. about splines and gearboxes on the vertical auger and transition and whatnot mm -hmm. there. And Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. saving wear and tear and, and uh, the things that I like about on this kit too, being integrated, right? We've got aftermarket kits that are available. You might have a foot pedal or something else you've got to actuate inside the cab to get the clean out sequence to go. Whereas this is all timed off our hydro handle, right? We press the button, it does the, the automatic countdown for us, shuts those cross augers off and then shuts off the unloading auger. We've still got the option to shut it off if we double tap it just like we would normally would and just integrates it all right, makes it, makes it seamless, it's part of the machine. One improvement we've seen on this uh, combine is the tech and the, the ground speed automation side of it. So building on what we've had in the past uh, with Harvest Smart, we're going to utilize more inputs into the ground speed automation on the select and premium tech packages to allow for a, a little better uh, idea what's going on for ground speed control, or I guess just make it a little less reactive than maybe what we've seen before in variable crop. But we take that a step further in the ultimate tech package we get. We get the ultimate, right? And what do we get uh, inside that? Absolutely, in the ultimate tech package, we're gonna get what we call predictive ground speed automation. And that's gonna give us a couple different components on top of what we have with ground speed automation, right? So you're gonna get stereoscopic cameras. You'll see those on the cab behind me here, uh, as well as you're gonna be able to have the ability to run satellite imagery through the operation center into your command center display in that combine so that it knows what to do before it reaches that particular point in the crop. It's gonna measure the biomass of the crop, and it's gonna make adjustments to the combine as it needs to. So uh, the big picture to that is that the combine is gonna be more proactive in its approach to making adjustments rather than reactive that we've always seen in the past, right? So just making those leaps and bounds into the, that technology right. to, to help with that progressive approach to it. Yep. Yeah, the beauty in that system too is we've got all those extra inputs. If we lose one or we have issues with one, say the map doesn't work, the camera images aren't working, we use the, the ability between all those different inputs to still utilize that technology and let that uh, predictive system run. So um, that's beauty in that too, because we know we have problems once in a while or something doesn't work. We can still make that, that system operate and keep that machine running. Absolutely, yeah. The term for that would be essentially sensor fusion, right? So we're either using the cameras or the satellite imagery or using them both together, right? Thanks everybody for joining us on this S7 series combine walk around. I'm really excited to present this to you guys uh, going forward in the future. Stay tuned throughout the rest of the demo season here. We'll be providing updates on more of the technology side of things and how it's performing out in the field and, and share that with you as we learn more. I'm Wayne Will. I'm Justin Myrie for CNB Operations. Thanks for watching.